Welcome to my video on additive relationships. So we've already talked about proportional relationships and we're going to review what that is in just a second. And now we're going to learn about additive relationships today. So remember, proportional thinking requires students to think proportionally. However, the relationship between two quantities is not always proportional. The relationship between two quantities could be additive. And the example would be one quantity is a result of adding a value to the other quantity. So you can look at an example down here. We get from 2 to 10 by adding 8, 3 to 11 by adding 8, 4 to 12 by adding 8, and 5 to 13 by adding 8. So we're adding the same number each time. You could also subtract the same number each time because remember, adding a negative is the same as subtracting. So we could be looking for a subtraction pattern when we're looking for an additive relationship. Or you know, we have the other one that we learned, or proportional. And the example is one quantity is the result of multiplying the other quantity by a value. So look at the example here. You see 2 times 5 is 10, 3 times 5 is 15, 4 times 5 is 20, and 5 times 5 is 25. Now, if you look back at this one, you might say this is times 5, but look at the next example. 3 times 5 is not 11. So we would know right there that this is not a proportional relationship because you have to be multiplying by the same number all the way through. This is why this is an additive relationship because we're adding 8 each time. And then this one is a proportional or multiplicative relationship because you're multiplying by the same number each time. So let's look at some real world examples and see if we can come up with the rule. Oh, before I do that, I'm sorry. An additive relationship is represented by the equation y equals, write this down, x plus b. And what the x represents, remember there's really a 1 there, so that represents a slope of 1. So when you don't see a number in front of the x, that means the slope is 1. And the b, right here, we can draw an arrow. The b represents the y-intercept. And let me circle it since we usually circle it on the graph. So let's circle it. That's the y-intercept. Okay. So now let's look at the example. Sarah's taking piano lessons and will learn one new song per week. When she started, she already knew how to play five songs. So one new song per week, underline. When she started, she already knew how to play five songs. The number of songs Sarah knows how to play is represented by Y. So the song she knows how to play is represented by y, and the number of weeks she's been taking lessons is represented by x. Complete the table to show how many songs she knows after each week, and then graph the table. So we know that Sarah already knew how to play five songs. So before she even started, she already knew five songs. So at zero weeks, she knew five songs. And then she learns one song per week. So after one week, if she already knew five songs and she learned a song after week one, then she now knows six. And then after two weeks, she now knows seven. And after three weeks, she now knows eight. And after four weeks, she now knows nine. Okay, so let's graph this. The x is 0, the y is 5, so let's go up to 0, 5. The next one is 1, 6. 
and then 27 is right here and 38 and 49 notice when I graphed these I started with the X first and then did the Y okay let's connect that and remember um, we've talked about this before uh, when it starts here like this we're not gonna have negative songs or negative weeks so we just put the arrow on this end. And I want you to circle this because this is what? The y-intercept. That's where it crosses the y-axis or touches the y-axis. So y-intercept. Okay. Now let's go ahead and look at this and find the slope. So we go up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. So my slope is one over one, and one divided by one is one. So, but look here. Okay, we don't have to put the one in front of the x. It can be in disguise, but let's look. Okay, one times zero is zero, but I don't get five. Hmm. So there must be an ending here. So if I multiply 1 by 0, because that's the slope, and I get 0, how do I get to 5? Add 5. Okay? So let's look at this one. 1 times 1 is 1. How do I get to 6? Add 5. 1 times 2 is 2. How do I get to 7? Add 5. Same thing here. Add 5 and add 5. So the rule is x plus 5. Now you can also look here and know that it crosses the y-axis or touches the y-axis at 5, so that also tells you that the ending is plus 5. Now is this an additive relationship? The answer is yes, because if you look all the way through, you are adding 5. So let's write that here. We're adding 5 all the way through. Okay, let's turn the page and look at example number two. Alexis can swim eight yards in four seconds. So let's underline that. The number of yards Alexis can swim is represented by Y. So yards is Y. And seconds are X. Complete the table to show how far she can swim in a certain amount of time. So we know that 8 yards is 4 seconds. So in 4 seconds, she goes 8 yards. So we want to know, in a certain amount of time, we want to know the yards per second, right? So what we could do here is we could find the rate of change otherwise known as slope, otherwise known as unit rate here because she's going every four seconds, she goes eight yards. So we can divide the yards by seconds. So we can take eight yards divided by four seconds. And we can simplify this by dividing top and bottom by four. And we get two over one, which is just what? Two. So be careful here. I sh probably should have done it down here. I apologize. I probably should have done it down here. We ran out of room. So it's two yards per second. So sometimes you put the slash there instead of writing the word per. So we got two yards per second. So that means after one second, we go two yards. So after zero seconds, how far will we go? Zero. After two seconds, we would go four. And after three, we would go six because we're going two yards per second. So all I have to do is multiply each of the seconds by two to get the yards. So let's graph this. Zero, zero. One, two. Two, four. Three, six. And four, eight. Okay, we can use our, well, you would use your ruler. I'm using the line tool here, and I got to put the arrow on the end. Now, let's circle this. It crosses through the origin, so that means there's going to be no ending. 
in our equation. And let's look at the graph here. Up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and up 2 over 1. So the slope is 2. So is this an additive relationship? No, because we are multiplying all the way through. And look. 0 times 2 is 0, 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 2 is 6, and 4 times 2 is 8. So the equation is 2x. We're multiplying all the x's by 2 to get the y. Okay, let's look at example number 3. On each necklace Evelyn makes, there are three more purple beads than silver beads. The number of silver beads is represented by x, and the number of purple beads is represented by y. Complete the table to show the relationship. So Evelyn makes three more purple than silver. So she always makes three more purple than silver. Well, if we have zero and she makes three more purple, we have three. What's three more than one? Four. What's three more than two? Five. What's three more than three? Six, and what's three more than four? Seven. So let's graph that, and you've probably already come up with the rule. What are we doing to the x to get to the y? We're adding three, so x plus three. But I'm going to show you some other ways you could have come up with that. So we have zero, three, one, four, two, five, three, six, and 4, 7. Okay, uh, use your ruler to make a straight line. Put an arrow. And is this an additive relationship? It sure is. We're adding the same number each time. And look what we're adding. Add 3, add 3, add 3. And I'm doing this to make sure my rule actually works. Okay, circle the y-intercept. So here's a couple different ways you can look at it. We went up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. So the slope is 1 over 1, which means the slope is 1. And when the slope is 1, we don't have to write it in front of the x. So we're asking ourselves, what are we doing to the x to get to the y? So add 3, Add 3, add 3, add 3. So there's many different ways that we can come up with that equation when it's an additive relationship, when the slope is 1. Okay, so let's look at example number 4. Now we're taking away the graph, so we've got to fall back to our way of finding the slope before. So remember, we said we can pick any two of these points, but I'm just going to pick this one. So negative 9 to negative 7, where it went up to and negative 2 to 0. We also went up 2. So the slope is 1 over 1. Sorry, 2 over 2. Hold on, I got ahead of myself. We can divide top and bottom by 2. To simplify, and we get 1 over 1, which means that the slope is 1. I don't need to write the 1 in front of the x. So what are we doing to the x to get to the y? Hmm. I see they're about seven apart, okay? So are we thinking add seven or subtract seven? Well, if you're thinking add seven, look down here, eight plus seven is not one. So it must be subtract seven. So we would go x minus seven. I know you are thinking, well, you could add negative seven, but the best way to write an equation is with subtraction. So we're not going to write plus negative 7, we're going to write x minus 7. When it's a, when we're adding a negative, we're going to write the subtraction. So is this an additive relationship? It sure is, because we're adding negative 7, or think about it this way, we're subtracting 7. So write minus 7, minus 7, minus 7, and minus 7. And when you come up with the rule, make sure it works for all the values. Double check it. And if I check all these, it does, in fact, work. Let's look at our final example. So we're going to find the slope to write the equation. Um, and if 
you don't want to deal with negatives, you can skip down here and go, okay, let's look at these two. How do you get from 0 to 8? Plus 8. And 0 to 2? Plus 2. You don't always have to pick the first two in the table. You can pick ones that are easier to identify. Remember, slope is change in y over change in x. And what can I divide top and bottom by to simplify? Good, it's 2. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And 4 divided by 1 is 4. So that means the slope is 4. So let's see if that works. Is negative 2 times 4 negative 8? Yes. Is 0 times 4 0? Yes. Is 2 times 4 8? And is 4 times 4 16? They sure are. So our equation is we're multiplying the x by 4. So is that an additive relationship? It's not because it's proportional because we're multiplying each time. So let's write the times 4 so that we can actually see what we did to check it. Okay, that concludes our notes on additive relationships. I hope you have a great day.